both serial communication in 8051 and uh, this kind of uh, data or this kind of communication is provided by one peripheral inside uh, 8051 and that is UART. So we'll discuss how to use this UART and how to configure this UART but before that we'll start with uh, what is a communication and uh, the classifications of the communication okay. So here communication is nothing but transfer of data between the two entities or two systems or two points or two machines so that is called as communication and it is classified into two types here one is parallel and the other one is serial in case of parallel multiple bits are transferred at the same time through multiple channels but when it comes to serial a single bit is transferred at a time through a single channel so that is why it is called as a serial communication okay now let us see how a uh, serial communication looks like and how parallel communication looks like here this is a serial communication where a sender and receiver is connected with one channel where the sender always sends the data and here the receiver always receives the data that is this uh, through this particular channel okay but when it comes to parallel communication between the sender and the receiver you can see multiple channels so these multiple channels will be carrying multiple data bits at the same time as you have eight uh, eight channels here so eight data bits are transferred at the same time okay so when you look at the advantages and drawbacks here serial communication advantage is it is simpler and uh, the cost which is used for implementing this kind of communication is very less but when it comes to drawbacks of serial communication here the speed of transmission is very less okay but in case of parallel uh, parallel communication the advantage is speed of transmission is high but the drawbacks are here as this system looks very complex therefore here the cost you or the cost uh, for implementing this kind of communication is very much high and uh, there is a chance of noise uh, to degrade the message okay now let us see the transmission types in serial communication that is simplex half duplex and full duplex in case of simplex the transmitter and receiver are connected with a single channel and this channel is always unidirectional therefore the transmitter will always transmit the data and the receiver will always receive the data through this channel so that is why it is called as unidirectional communication and when it comes to half duplex here at a time one machine can transmit the data and the other machine can receive the data here we have a bidirectional channel but simultaneous transmission is not possible with this channel why because we have only one channel but it is bidirectional and when it comes to full duplex communication here we have two independent channels one is for transmission and the other is for receiving so that is why it is called as bidirectional communication and uh, simultaneous communication is also possible with this full duplex communication now let us see the transmission modes in case of serial communication there are two transmission modes one is asynchronous and the other one is synchronous so in case of asynchronous transmission uh, both the transmitter and the receivers are connected to different clock sources but the clocks the clock value should be same why because synchronization synchronization is done only with those clocks so here both the both the clocks for transmitter and receiver are independent but when it comes to synchronous transmitter and receiver are synchronized with a same clock why because in case of synchronous transmission uh, one device would be generating the clock and the other device would be receiving the same clock which is generated by the other device the device which generates the clock is called as master and the device which receives the clock is called as slave so we are as we are giving only one clock signal then both are synchronized with that clock signal now uh, we'll see how asynchronous transmission goes on how a data or a character is transmitted in asynchronous transmission character by character is transmitted and uh, every character would uh, would be going through one process that is called as framing and the output of this process is called as a frame okay now in this uh, framing process each and every character is added with some additional bits they are start bit stop bit and there is one uh, optional bit that is parity bit okay so here start bit indicates uh, the receiver that it is the start of a character and here stop bit indicates the receiver that it is a end of a character so with the help of these bits the receiver and transmitter gets synchronized 
okay now as you can see here initially the transmitter uh, assuming that the transmitter on the right side and the receiver on the left side it has transmitted the start bit then it will transmit the 8 bit character okay and then an optional parity bit so we uh, if it is required then we can use and then a stop bit okay you can see with an example here where my character is a which is represented uh, with ascii value so ascii representation requires totally 8 bits so initially it sends the start bit and then 8 bit message or character and then the stop bit now here start message as well as stop bit is nothing but a single frame okay now here technically the start bit is called as uh, space signal and the stop bit is called as a mark signal now as just now i said uart is the peripheral which is used inside the uh, controller for providing asynchronous communication why because the name itself says that a universal asynchronous receiver transmitter where it can provide only asynchronous type of communication and uh, it will be acting as an interface between the processor and the serial port okay and here this uh, uart will be receiving uh, the data in the form of bytes from the processor and it converts that into serial data and uh, transmits to the peripheral and when it is receiving the data from the peripheral it again receives in serial form and then converts it into byte form and then given to the processor so that is why it is also called as serial to parallel or parallel to serial converter now here uart supports ttl voltage levels which is of 0 to 5 volts but whereas if you are if you want to increase the length of the communication then noise gets introduced into the channels so in order to reduce the noise we have to use a protocol for implementing the communication and that protocol is called as rs232 now here rs232 would be representing the data bits with higher voltage levels so as the voltage levels are increased therefore the length of uh, transmission can also be increased okay so we have to follow this particular protocol whenever we want to increase the length of the transmission or receiving okay now here in case of a uart it will represent a binary zero with zero volts but in case of this protocol rs232 it is represented by a voltage in between 3 to 25 volts and binary one is represented by 5 volts in uart and uh, rs232 is going to represent the same binary one uh, with a voltage in between minus 3 volts to 25 that is minus 25 volts so let us see what is that protocol rs232 here rs indicates recommended standards and uh, it was designed by eia electronics industries association and protocol uh, basically means set of rules so whenever we are using this protocol we have to follow the rules which were uh, designed or which were, which were designed for this rs232 protocol and those rules are it specifies two rules one is voltage specifications and the other one is signal specifications okay in case of voltage specifications as you can see it will represent logic one with minus 3 to minus 25 volts and logic 0 with plus 3 to plus 25 volts and it will also uh, specify some signals we'll see what are those and uh, these kind of signals are also called as negative logic signals and ttl signals are called as positive logic signals why because here logic 1 is represented with its negative voltages and logic 0 is represented with po positive voltages so that is why they are, these are called as negative logic signals let us see what what kind of signals that rs 32 is going to specify so it will be specifying uh, nine signals here okay data carrier detect receive data transmitted data data terminal ready signal ground data set ready request to send clear to send and ring indicator okay now out of these nine signals or nine pins in serial communication we would be using only that is in asynchronous serial communication we would be using only three pins those are receive data rxd transmit data txd and then signal ground so these are the three signals which we use in case of asynchronous communication and uh, as i told you that uart will be supporting uh, positive voltages and but but uh, but the processor would be understanding or the communication uh, through this rs232 requires the voltages to be represented in negative form so in order to convert the positive voltages to negative voltages we use one ic and that ic is called as max to the two now this will convert the negative or positive voltages which are coming from the 8051 to negative form and the negative voltages which are coming from the rs to the two to the positive form 
So that is why we use max to zero two. Assuming that if I'm connecting eight zero five one controller to the uh, CPU of a computer, then the computer CPU supports plus or minus twelve volts, but whereas eight zero five one supports only zero to five volts. So I cannot directly connect uh, the voltages of this PC to this eight zero five one. Why? Because it damages the IC. So in between the PC and eight zero five one, I would be using max to zero two, which will convert the Incoming voltages into that is negative voltages into positive voltages and positive voltages into negative voltages. Now let us see the registers which we actually uh, need to access for using this particular peripheral. Okay, so S buff, which is called as serial buffer register, and uh, the length of this register is eight bits. And uh, if you if I want to transmit any data, that data must be placed into this S buff. And if I if I want to receive any data. Then the received data must be stored inside this S buff register. Okay, so if you want to transmit, then you have to place that character into the S buff. And if you want to receive the data, so if a, any peripheral is sending the data, that would be received inside this, or that would be stored inside this S buff. From where we have to read the data into a variable. Okay, so S buff serial buffer, and uh, the length of this register is eight bits. Okay, and uh, we have to represent every character only by using ASCII values here. Now we have one more register that is SCON, and uh, it is bit addressable because I can address individual bit without affecting the other bits. Okay, see SCON is nothing but serial control register. As you can see, there are totally eight bits. It is an eight-bit register. Okay, let us see the importance of each and every bit. SM0 and SM1 are used for selecting a particular mode. We'll see that, and SM2 for multi-processor communication. So if if two processors or if more than one processor is connected. to the system bus then the communication between the processors is uh, is done by by programming this particular bit to logic one and then only the processor is going to recognize the request from the other processor and ren if you program this particular bit to logic one then uh, we then the receiver gets enabled if you are programming it to zero then the receiver gets disabled so that we cannot receive any data from the external world TB8 and RB8. These two are the bits which are used for holding the ninth bit during the uh, during the modes that is mode two and mode three. Okay, and TI. TI is the bit which is used for representing when a character is transmitted. After tran after uh, after transmitting a character, this particular bit will become one, indicating that a character has been transmitted successfully. Okay, and this RI represents the status of the receiving uh the receiving data uh, that is after receiving a character and after placing that character into the sbuff then this ri would become one indicating that one character is received and that is stored inside the sbuff now these are about the modes that we have mode 0 mode 1 mode 2 and mode 3 mode 0 is called as 8 bit shift register and here baud rate is calculated with this formula that is oscillator divided by 12 and mode 1 is called as 8 bit uart set by timer 1 and we'll see what is the formula and uh, mode 2 9 bit uart and mode 3 is also 9 bit uart and these two modes that is mode 2 and mode 3 are used in case of multi processor communication so basically in most of the applications we we would be using only mode 1 okay so let us see one more register that is pcon which is nothing but power control register and uh, here you can see uh, it is an 8 bit register with uh, the starting bit as uh, s mod And then GF zero, and then we have GF one. Now here, S mod is the bit, which uh, if if that particular bit is programmed to zero, then we would be using only the normal baud rate. If that particular bit is programmed to one, it means that uh, we would be doubling the baud rate. Okay, and GF one and GF zero are two general purpose user flags and power down. Now whenever this particular bit is one. then the processor enters into power down now what happens in power down mode clock is gated off to all the sections including the peripherals and supply voltage would be reduced to 2 volts only just to keep the data present in the ram okay so that is what happens in power down mode which is similar to uh which is similar to standby mode in the pcs okay what happens there 
if we click on standby then the process would be running whatever the process or whatever the application that we are running before standby uh, would be running why because supply voltage will be will only be given to the ram okay and uh, if this particular bit that is idle bit is programmed to one then it makes the processor in idle state and clock signal is available to all the peripherals but not to the cpu it means only the clock signal will be gated off to the processor but all the pe all the other peripherals would be receiving the clock signal see uh, this is what the formula which we use for calculating the baud rate so here f baud is known to us why because if i want to uh, establish the communication between the processor or controller controller and some other peripheral then uh, i will uh, i will uh, sorry i know what is the baud rate supported by the peripheral so we have to select that baud rate and 2 power s mod s mod for doubling the baud rate as i told you and uh, 32 is a constant i'll tell you what is this 32 f oscillator here is nothing but 11.0592 megahertz and 12 uh, i'll show what is this 12 and then 256 minus th1 as i told you that we have to use only timer 1 in mode 2 for generating the baud rate okay why because here we have only timer 1 and then as uh, the maximum value here is 256 which is only in case of auto reload mode so that is why we have to use this uh, timer one in auto reload mode for generating the baud rate see this is uh, this is what the uh, this is how the internal hardware looks like where the crystal frequency is given or through uh, divide by 12 circuit and this 921.6 kilohertz will be given to uart internally in uart we have a divide by 32 circuit therefore it will divide the incoming frequency 921.6 kilohertz by 32 and the output frequency 28800 hertz will be given as an input to or as a clock input to the timer one so that is why we can only set the baud rate with the help of timer one but not with timer zero okay and these are the baud rates which are uh, already calculated for 9600 4800 2400 and 1200 in hexadecimal format okay by using the formula formula which i have shown previously that is this so as we know s mod should be zero and here it is constant f oscillator we know that 12 is a constant 256 is constant and we know what is the baud rate that uh, we are going with therefore we have to find out th1 so after finding out th1 we have to load that value into th1 thank you and uh, in the next session we'll discuss about interrupts for more videos visit www. Citrus.com